Hello and welcome to the AWS IoT channel. My name is Amama Bashra. I'm an IoT specialist solutions architect at AWS. And today in this video, I'm going to discuss MQTT version 5 and the enhanced features that come with the new version of the protocol. Also, we will see how you can connect your devices over MQTT 5 using AWS IoT Core to make use of these enhanced features. So let's get started. So MQTT or Message Queuing Telemetry Transport Protocol, as we all know, has become the most popular protocol for IoT device communication. But the original format was designed for small size packets and limited compute environments. The new version has been designed to support large fleet deployments and also has a focus on enhanced reliability, security and flexibility of using different features within the MQTT messages. So MQTT 5 has been an OSS standard since March 2019, succeeding MQTT 3.1.1, which was released earlier in 2014. Uh, AWS IoT announced its support for MQTT 5 in November 2022. Customers can now connect their devices to AWS IoT Core over MQTT 5, or you can still use MQTT 5 with MQTT 3.1.1 within your deployments. The AWS IoT Device Advisor test cases also now support MQTT 5, which allows the customer to validate the MQTT functionality during their device software development. And with the AWS Device Qualification Program, AWS partners can now qualify their devices over MQTT 5. So now let's unveil MQTT 5 and its new features. This is the list of the features that I'm going to briefly discuss one by one during this video. And please drop a comment below if you would like to understand more about any of these features or if you have any questions. The first is the request and response feature, which allows a sender to get a response from the receiver for a specific message. Let's consider an example of a mobile app that sends a message to unlock the door of a car. So the door lock subscribes to a specific topic on which the mobile app sends messages to it. The mobile app sends a subscribe message with the response topic to the IoT broker and then it publishes a message on the same topic to which the door lock is subscribed to. The message can also contain some correlation data which is to uniquely identify the request and match it with the response. The AWS IoT Core broker processes the messages and publishes it to the topic on which the door lock is subscribed to. The door lock receives the response from the broker and uses the correlation data to match the response with the original request. The door lock then processes the request from the app and publishes the response with the acknowledgement that it received the request and has acted upon it. So this request and response feature provides the reliability which is crucial for critical applications where message delivery and response confirmations are essential. It also allows synchronous communication and sort of end-to-end -end acknowledgement. Then it can also be used in cases for error handling or real-time feedback. The next feature is the user properties. In MQTT 3, you had to decode the payload to determine how to process the specific message. But using this new header field for user properties in MQTT 5, you can understand the message type and sort of pre-decode it without looking at the payload. So this feature can be used for message routing and filtering based on the specified properties, and it can give you increased control and granularity of message distribution within your complex IoT deployments. Secondly, it can help with diverse data handling as well as interoperability where the clients can specify different format types, payload types, or standards using this field in the header. And then it can also help in reducing the payload size. So by moving some of the key information in the header using the user property, you can actually reduce some of the payload size. So the next feature is the topic alias, which is used to shorten the URL of the subscribed topics. It allows the use of numeric aliases to represent longer topic strings. And this helps with reducing the overhead on both the client and the broker side. So as you can see in this example, the car is subscribed to a long string topic. And for using the topic alias, it publishes the topic alias to the message broker along with the long string of the topic. For all the next messages, it can only use the topic alias instead of using the long string. In scenarios where multiple devices or clients, they subscribe to same or similar topics, then using full topic string can lead to increased processing load on both the client and the broker side. But if you switch to topic aliases, then you can reduce the data overhead. And this is particularly beneficial for devices with limited bandwidth and processing power. So you can also reduce bandwidth consumption. 
Okay, so the next one is the shared subscription feature, which enables multiple MQTT clients to share a single subscription on the broker. Now in MQTT3, every subscriber to a topic received a copy of the message posted to that topic. And this sometimes caused devices to do become overwhelmed with messages, especially if there were applications subscribed to a wide set of clients. But with MQTT5, this concept of shared subscriptions, you can deliver a copy of the message to only one of the clients, which is subscribed to a shared subscription group. And the messages, they are randomly sent to the subscribers within the shared subscription group. So here is an example to show you how shared subscription works. We have a large number of smart homes sending their data to AWS IIT Core over a common topic. The topic has five subscribers. We have subscriber 1A, 1B in the group 1 and subscriber 2A, 2B in group 2. The subscriber 3A is an independent subscriber. Now for each message that is published from the IoT devices within the smart homes, each group receives the message, but only one member from each group receives it. In group 1, it can be either 1A, 1B, and in group 2, it could be 2A or 2B. The client 3A receives all the messages because it is not sharing the subscription with any other subscribers. Shared subscriptions use a reserved topic root and a shared topic name that is used to group the subscribers. This feature allows messages on a topic to be distributed among multiple subscribers, thereby improving the load balancing on the subscriber side as well as fault tolerance in an IoT deployment. So next are the reason codes which give you the result of an MQTT operation. And in MQTT3, there were only three return codes to determine what went wrong when connecting to the server. But in MQTT5, we now have a list of over 100 reason codes, which are included in the response packets exchanged between the clients and the brokers. You can see some of the reason codes in here. And also there are new reason codes for packets, which previously didn't have reason codes. So you, th these are some of the packets that have new reason codes in MQTT5. The key benefits of these reason codes is that they provide more granular insight into the status of MQTT operations and help in identifying the exact nature of errors. Also, they make it easier for applications to understand what went wrong and take appropriate actions, so help in improve debugging and error handling. Also, MQTT5 reason codes, they cover diverse set of scenarios, including subscription acknowledgements, disconnects, protocol violations, authentication issues, and many more. So to provide a clear indication of why a particular action succeeded, failed, or encountered any issue. One example would be in MQTT version 3.1.1, only the client could send the disconnect message. And if the server encountered problems, it would simply terminate the session. But in MQTT version 5, the server can now send the client a disconnect message along with the reason code as why the disconnect happened. The next feature is the payload format. And this field was defined to allow for standardization of payload formats. So the payload format indicator provides information about the format of the payload within an MQTT message, and it is part of the properties that can be included within an MQTT packet. This indicator helps the receiver to understand how the payload is structured or encoded so that it can properly process and interpret the message. The client can set a property for the payload zero, which is default, and it means the payload is not formatted or has an unknown format structure. But if it is set to one, it indicates that the payload is formatted according to a well-known structure or encoding. And the exact format can be identified using the content type property. So if you see in the example here, there are multiple sensors sending data to AWS IoT Core with the payload format indicator set to one and content type mentioned as plain text or base64. Now, once the IoT rules engine receives these MQTT messages, it examines the content type and based on the content type, it then routes the messages for further decoding and processing. The next is the session expiry feature. This allows the clients and the brokers to manage the lifecycle of an MQTT session. Now, when a client connects to a broker, it can set the session expiry interval, which will specify the maximum duration for which the broker should maintain session state after the client disconnects. And if the client reconnects within this interval, the broker will restore the client session and deliver any messages that were published to the subscribed topics during the time the client was disconnected. But if the client doesn't reconnect during the interval, then all the session related information is discarded by the broker. So this feature was also available in MQTT3, but there you could only have the session expiration timer with a default value of one over. Whereas in MQTT5, you can set the session expiry interval for each of the sessions. 
The benefit of using this feature is that it ensures any inactive or disconnected clients don't consume unnecessary resources on the broker and any resources that are held by expired sessions, they would be released. So freeing up memory and storage on the broker. And this helps in reducing network overhead as well as recovering unused resources. And another one is the message expiry, which is different from session expiry because it is set at a message level rather than the whole session level. And it allows the publishers to set an expiration time on the messages that they publish to the MQTT topics, which means that the messages will be automatically discarded by the broker if they are not delivered to the subscribers within a certain time frame. Uh, one example of that would be that the user through the mobile app wants to send a message to lock or unlock the car's door. Due to the security concerns, you would want to ensure that the lock and the unlock command is executed within a reasonable amount of time. And if not, then it becomes invalid. But on the other hand, if there is a firmware update message that needs to be sent to the uh, device, and if the device is offline or experiencing connectivity issues, you would want the message to stay longer and have a longer expiry time so that whenever the device comes back online, it can receive and update its firmware. And in this way, you can send the most current and relevant data to your devices and also reduce message loss during intermittent device connectivity. And then we have the clean start feature. So this feature helps the MQTT clients to manage their sessions according to their requirements. And it helps to reduce the overhead on both the client and the broker side. So in that way, the broker doesn't need to keep track of previous session data or any uh, subscriptions that the client might have. Uh, and also the client doesn't need to receive any retained or missed messages. So this feature, along with the session expiry interval, allows you to handle persistent sessions. The clean start will control the beginning of the connecting session and end of the previous session. So if you set it to one, a new session will get created and the previous session gets terminated. But if you set the clean start to zero, the connecting session resumes a previous session if it exists. The session expiry interval will control the duration of the connecting session. So it will basically specify how long the session will persist after a disconnect. So in this way, you can force a reconnect on a client so that any previous session state, including subscriptions, retained messages or message history can be discarded by the broker. And similar to the session expiry interval, it will allow you to reduce overheads and optimize resource usage as well as efficient state management for the sessions. So with that, we are towards the end of the video. And just to quickly wrap it up, in the video, you saw enhanced features that have been added to the new version of the MQTT protocol with features like request response, user properties, topic alias, and improved error handling. MQTT 5 offers a lot more flexibility, efficiency, and reliability in IoT communication. Then you also saw how AWS now supports your devices to be connected to AWS IoT over MQTT 5. And this now offers many new possibilities within the IoT communication. So that's it from me today. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.